Hi, my name is Eric Tesh. I'm a respiratory therapist here in Bethesda, Maryland, and today I want to be talking to you about Parapac Pneumatic Transport Ventilator. This ventilator is very user-friendly. It is, um, you're able to use it for patients in the hospital, uh, EMS transports, and it's also MRI compatible. You can tell it has very easy to use knobs. Here you have your pressure relief on off switch, 50% FiO2, 100% FiO2, your frequency for your respiratory rate, and your tidal volume. I will go through each one. So your pressure relief, you want to have that at about 40 centimeters of water pressure to start, depending on the size of your patient. But this is your pressure relief also as your, your PIP, your peak inspiratory pressure relief. You have a little ball here that shows how much PSI or pressure is powering the machine. Uh, uh, 50 PSI, uh, me, 50 PSI um, attachment here will go to an oxygen hose, which will hook up to either an O2 cylinder or to the wall O2. On off switch, air oxygen mixer, you have 50% or 100%. 100% is recommended for CPR or if your patient has high oxygen demand. You have a frequency rate of eight all the way up to 30, all the way up to 40 breaths per minute. It's recommended to start at a rate of 12 for an adult. And then you can go up higher for children all the way to infants. It's recommended to have um, anywhere not less than five mils per kilogram of tidal volume. So this is not recommended for neonatal patients, mostly for adults and children. You have your tidal volume at a minimum of 70 mils all the way up to 1500 milliliters. I will show you the circuit now. We have your basic corrugated tube in here, which will plug into the patient outlet. You have your gas inlet nozzle here, which will hook up to your O2 hose. Just, see that. Just screw on here. Actually, it's recommended to put that on first, that way your O2 tubing is not in the way. Anytime you're doing a transport, you want to go from the O2 cylinder directly to the wall as soon as possible. That way you maintain your pressure within the cylinder. You have your circuit here. With our Parapac circuits, it comes with this device here where you'll have a few different outlets here. It's all labeled so it tells you exactly where to place everything. So you'll hook this up to the nozzle here. It's rather a tight fit. You have an extension here. This is where your peep valve will go, much like an ambu bag. You can dial in anywhere from zero all the way up to 20 a peep. It's recommended to start at about a peep of five. That's our normal physiologic peep. And then the bottom part here, as you, if you look on here closely, it says two patient and going down. So this is where you would connect to the endotracheal tube. Uh, it's recommended that if you have a bacterial filter, you can place that right there, and it will act both as a filter and an HME. And it's also a good idea to add a little bit of an extension to the endotracheal tube. What's an HME? HME is a heat moisture exchange. Uh, for ventilators that don't have an external heater, we usually place the HME in line. That way you maintain the heat humidification within the airway. And I'll hook this up to a test lung so that you can see its functionality when we turn it on. So on the top here, now that is hooked up to a wall O2 source greater than 40 PSI, the ball turned white. As we start losing pressure, if you're in an O2 cylinder, you will gradually see the ball start to turn red again, letting you know that you're losing um, pressure needed to power the pneumatic ventilator. So it's always a good idea to either put to a wall or change out your cylinders. So if I turn the power on, it's going to pressurize and you'll see it'll go through its checks with all these different lights. You have your high pressure alarm here, your cycle indicator, 
low pressure indicator, your alarm, your breath detection, that's for spontaneous breaths, and then low power for your battery. It does have one battery on the side here. That one battery powers just the alarms and the light for the ventilator. Everything else is powered pneumatically. It does have the ability to sense negative pressure. If a patient did take a spontaneous breath, you will see that the gauge will go down to negative 10 and it can go all the way up to 100 here. The normal power for, um, for for breath is about 30, and then you also have your pressure relief set to 40. It's best to match your patient's respiratory demand. So whatever kind of respiratory rate they were doing while either not intubated or on a different type of ventilator, you would try to match that and match your FiO2. Uh, if the high pressure alarm was to go off, either due to an obstruction or poor compliance, you do have a pressure relief alarm and indicator on the side here that will blow the rest of the, uh, will depressurize the system before the next breath. If it does have a low pressure indicator, usually that means that there is a disconnection either within the circuit or within the cuff of the endotracheal tube. You do have the ability to do an alarm silence here. If you were to press that, it would alarm silence for 30 seconds and then you would see it flash, letting you know that the alarm is still going off. You have a light here for your low supply. That is for your, either your, your low supply for your battery. So if the battery was getting low, you see the light start to flash, and then you would have an audible alarm as well. You do have the ability here, if you were to switch to 50% FiO2, you would have an air entrainment mix where the ventilator will be able to pull in some air to mix with the 100% FiO2 to give you a FiO2 of 50%. It's recommended that if you're in a toxic environment due to the CBRME or maybe a dusty area, that you leave it on 100%. That way you're not entraining any particles from outside. You'll just be getting 100% oxygen right from the cylinders. Again, this is a very user-friendly ventilator. It is MRI capable, compatible, all the way up to three Tesla. It's recommended that if you're gonna have a patient in MRI that this will kind of be between the legs of the patient, that way it's not going through the magnet itself. And again, very user-friendly. That's all I have for you.